Kuala Lumpur is the largest and most influential city of Malaysia. A population of Malays, Chinese, Indians, and others from around the world makes the city a melting pot of coexisting cultures that each preserves their own customs, traditions, and cuisines. The mixture of ethnicities, ancient architecture and modern skyscrapers, and most importantly, the mouth-watering food, makes Kuala Lumpur a fantastic city to visit. Now let's start with these 11 things to do in Kuala Lumpur. Nothing dominates the skyline and screams Kuala Lumpur more than the monster twin towers, which come in at number one. So I am at the base of the Petronas Towers. These are by far the most iconic landmarks in the city. At the ground level is a, is a big shopping center and then you can actually go to the 40, I think it's the 41st floor or something like that. Um, and there's a sky bridge where you can get a great view of the city from there. There's a beautiful park right next to the Petronas Towers that has some of the best drinking fountains I've ever seen in my life. Number two is the historical district of old central Kuala Lumpur. The area makes a great place for a walking tour. Despite all the modern skyscrapers in Kuala Lumpur, there's still a historic area. I'm just near the, the old railroad station and I'm doing a little walk around to see some of the most historical and some of the most prized buildings in Kuala Lumpur. So now I'm here at the entrance of Kuala Lumpur's National Mosque. Merdeka Square, which is the Independence Monument, and it's home to a 95 meter flagpole, which is among the tallest in the entire world. Number three is the Menara KL Tower. At 421 meters in height, the insanely tall communications tower touches the heavens. Dine at a sky restaurant, or just admire the unbelievable panoramic view from the top. On the top of the KL Menara Tower, um, at some absurd height up here, pretty scared out of my mind to, to sit on this ledge, but luckily I am strapped in so I don't fall off. Number four is Little India, known better as Brickfields. KL has a lot of Indian areas of town, but the area of Brickfields is known as the largest Little India in Kuala Lumpur. Brickfields is home to Hindu temples, small food markets, stores selling saris and other Indian clothing, and a tempting collection of mostly South Indian restaurants. I personally go there for the food. Number five, located on Petaling Street and popular with both locals and tourists, is Kuala Lumpur's Chinatown. I am in Chinatown on Petaling Street and uh, you can see lots of different stalls of clothes, uh, mostly clothes, shoes, watches, handbags, uh, DVDs, all kinds of stuff like that. There are also lots of restaurants both on this street and on the streets uh, surrounding the area of Chinatown. Number six is the Tianhao Chinese Temple, built by the Hainanese community in KL. The Taoist temple is dedicated to the Tianhao Goddess, or the Heavenly Mother. I am at the Tianhao Chinese Temple. It was built on the side of a hill, so you have a huge Chinese temple, but then you also have a view of Kuala Lumpur on the other side. Central Market, also known as Pasar Seni, is number seven. At one point, it was the original central market of the city. Uh, today, I think it's a little bit touristy inside, but it is a good place if you're looking to purchase souvenirs, Malaysian souvenirs, or a good place to browse around for a little while. So the central market. Number eight is the KL Lake Gardens and the KL Bird Park, which includes the world's largest in-flight aviary. For bird lovers, it shouldn't be missed. The KL Lake Gardens right now, walking around. Very nice scenery, and also, if you are interested, there is the KL Bird Park, the KL Mouse Deer Park, the Butterfly Park, and a Hibiscus Garden, 
an orchid garden, you name it. It's all right in this area, Kale Lake Gardens. Number nine is the Batu Caves. So I made it to the Batu Caves. It's located just 13 kilometers from the center of KL and is one of the most sacred Hindu religious sites outside of India. The 272 steps to the top is an easy climb that's rewarded with a gorgeous cave filled with Hindu religious shrines. At the bottom of the cave, you'll find a series of vegetarian restaurants where you can replenish your calories after the climb. Number 10 is the central Chowkit wet market. Chowkit market, and it's one of the largest fresh wet markets in the city. Um, and they have a lot of my absolute favorite ingredients in the entire world right, right down here in these aisles. Uh, stink bean. All the fresh ingredients you could ever need to prepare a Malay feast are available at Chow Kit. There's also always a delicious array of fresh tropical fruit as well. Did you really think I'd end this list of things to do in Kuala Lumpur without adding food as an attraction? For myself, and most local Malaysians as well, it's all about the food. And when you visit Kuala Lumpur, your mouth is going to rejoice with the diverse selection of Malay, Chinese, and Indian food available. Malaysia is one of the best countries in the world for food, and Kuala Lumpur offers something tasty at every corner. From nasi lemak to ikan bakar, char kway tiao to bak kut teh, and banana leaf to tandoori chicken, Kuala Lumpur is a food paradise. So no matter what you're interested in, whether it be history, shopping, or food, Kuala Lumpur is bound to have something that will make you excited. Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens here. I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to give it a quick thumbs up. Also, I've got a bunch of travel and street food videos coming up that you're not gonna wanna miss. So you see that big orange subscribe button down there? Go ahead and click that button so you don't miss my upcoming videos. Thanks a lot and see you soon.